What if your spouse is the one carrying the evil altar into the family? Do you stay with him? Do you submit to him? How do you handle it? All right, let's do the book of Ruth 1, verse 8 to 16. Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. Verse 9. And the Lord grant you that you may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then he kissed them and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there yet more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters, go your way. For I'm too old to have an husband. If you should say, I have hope, if I should have an husband also tonight and should also bear sons. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Opa kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. 15. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. Verse 16. And Ruth said, I entreat, entreat me not to leave thee or to return following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. And whether thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people and thy God shall be my God. Uh, marriage is not a contract. Marriage is a covenant. It's a covenant that uh, joins you with a people. It's a covenant that joins you with the spiritual atmosphere of the people, not just the people themselves alone, but the spiritual atmosphere that they carry. So if you marry into a place and you run a priesthood of righteousness and a priesthood of light, know before you even get married that you are entering into contention. The journey and the story of your marriage will be altar versus altar. The moment you become joined with your husband, the battle starts. And if you know the Lord much more than your husband does, most of the responsibility of determining how the battle goes will depend upon you. But one thing is sure, and that which is sure is in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. 1 Samuel chapter 5, verse 1 to 5, you are going to find an assurance in the scriptures. Yes, they serve idols, they are occultic people. You did not know as a woman, then you now married your husband. And the thing about marriage is that if you people met in the coven, that's why you people met and fell in love when you were casting spells. You fell in love in the coven, in the witchcraft quarters. If you get married, the marriage is valid even when you become Christians. The thing about marriage is that if you see somebody, are you there? In the hospital. That's where you met the person. And then you now got married. That marriage is valid whether you were married, were married in darkness or married in light or married in darkness and moved into light or married in darkness and one crossed over to light. The marriage is still... But that's the thing about marriage. And we need to understand that marriage is a big matter. May the Lord give you understanding. So, uh, now that you are there, let me teach you how to survive. The issue of whether you should fight or not, you have been, that issue is no longer a question. The issue that we should be talking about is how do you survive? How do you fight? How do you change the tide? May you never have the orientation that you want to attempt life. No, I don't want to attempt. I want to finish. Paul said, I finished my race. 
not that I attempted. I tried. I, I, no, I want to finish. It is when your mind is not made up to be involved in the warfare, that's when you become a victim all through your life. Now that you are married and you already have children as a woman, the chances for you, let me advise you, the chances for you, there are better chances for you to fight and secure victory for your husband. Don't ever think that staying alone, separating is a solution. Eh? Listen to me. You know, it's not every truth that is, is good to hear. Chloroquine is not sweet, but it delivers you from ailment. Me, I, I minister chloroquine. That's what people have sweet to minister. They have chewing gum to minister. God gave me chloroquine. It is what they gave you that you will minister. I am telling you, oh, mother, stand with your husband, even if he's a thief. Stand with him. Life is easier for you with that thief than for you to try to make life. It, demons will come and deceive you. You don't know how vulnerable you are without your husband. You don't know. You come and say, hey! It's just God using that man to cover you. Because the day that man is not there, you can't shout like that. You will, you will keep quiet. So even though he's a thief, he comes, and when he comes back home, he'll just frown. It is better than not having a man in your life. He will just frown, and his nose will go up. <laughs> and anytime you are describing the, the situation, you never forget to mention the nose. I am advising you, stick with that man and fight with him. May the Lord give you understanding. Now, you see, I told you to open to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 5 as I tried to give perspective to Sister Margaret's answer. And the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer unto Ashdod. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. And when there of Ashdod arose on the morrow, Behold, Dagon was fallen and his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon and set him in his place again. So what is happening here is that they brought the altar of Israel and put it in the same hostel with the altar of the Philistines. They felt, when they woke up in the morning, they saw the altar of the Philistines and the image of that altar was face down. So they had to come and help their God. <laughs> there was human effort to, to redeem the integrity of the God, the reputation of the God. The, the disciples came quickly in the morning and made Dagon to stand up. <laughs> you know why I came here? I wanted to show you that if you can smuggle the ark of God into that darkness, Stop asking all these questions. Become committed. Don't attempt life. Make sure you finish. Smuggle. I know the, the women here won't say amen. The way they are saying amen. The way they are saying it, I, I know the, the meaning. Take the ark of God into that place. Dagon will not survive it. Now, the worshippers of Dagon came early in the morning, before daybreak. They came into the shrine and saw the, the reaction. They rescued Dagon quickly and, and, and set it up again so that his masculinity will not be lost in transit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please help. If there's a woman close to you, tell the woman, smuggle the ark there. You know, when women get married, the idea of marriage is let us have soft bed and just lie down and then be doing make up in the morning, make up in the afternoon, make up in the night. And then she would tiptoe to the kitchen and look for orange juice and drink and take selfie of herself. I so makaye korea ikasem. Oh women, wake up. There's no life like that. 
I know you must have seen some pictures that they put on, on Facebook. People don't like it. Those people doing like that, they don't have husbands. <laughs> Small good they act. There. They gone. We bow. So the disciples came and they put they gone together, supported him so that he will be he will be standing. Are you there? And when they arose on the morrow. Behold, Dagon was falling upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both his palms and his house were cut off from the threshold. Only the stump of Dagon was left. It's as if the people knew that mischief will, will take place. <laughs> they were sure of mischief. So in the morning they came again this time. Dagon could not be helped this time. Because Dagon became crippled. Only <laughs> I have seen families where they married a woman and then they began to torment the witches. They began to torment the woman. Began to torment the woman. Began to torment the woman. And then the woman now, she was a kind of woman. She just said, Lord, you know I don't have any hope again. Then she started fasting. Fast. You know when a woman gets angry and she ties wrapper, there's a way that <laughs> ties wrapper like this. It means stop that. If if you if it's your wife, just beg her and say, okay, it's okay. So no more problem. She she tied the wrapper and began to fast in the night, began to pray in the night, began to pray in the night. The people that wanted to use witchcraft to navigate, the witchcraft was no longer working. They couldn't. Ah. The team. The crystal ball couldn't work. All the instruments that they used to survey, surveillance instruments, black out. Ah. They sent one of them to the woman and said, ah. That's after they have intimidated her with dreams. They will bring one beast in her dream like this. To get her to stop praying then they'll they bring one one anaconda one big snake then the snake will crawl in the in the dream and like it then i will speak to the woman we're after you so that she'll be intimidated she didn't care about her kept pressing when all the imageries that they present through dreams don't have the power to intimidate you and you still keep pressing they will now come in the natural and say you know this prayer this prayer can cost something. This prayer, it can cost something. Minimize it so that there will be no problem. When you hear that, it means that witches are, they are terrorized. Witches have been intimidated. What you will do is that you take up your journey. Then they will look to see if you have children. And then they will smite one of your child with an affliction. An affliction that is not medical. If you are not wise, you rush the child to the hospital. And when they do anything medical, maybe an injection, it will develop abscess. That problem that is coming on that child, especially when your prayers are intense and then your child falls sick, is that same prayer that will cure that child. I have seen it over and over again. And the woman kept pressing. The woman kept pressing. The prayer, she will use it and inoculate the children. And it will work faster than Panadol. Work faster than aspirin. Work faster than Cameron. Prayer. Huh? This time the witches now understand that the battle line has been drawn. One day they will come for incantation. That's how somebody will just die there. And then they will abandon the altar for some time. Not forever, for some time. And then you will have breakthrough. You will have peace. They want to test you with prosperity. They've tested you with affliction. You did not bow, so they will test you with prosperity and allow you to prosper and become fat so that when you raise your leg like this, <laughs> it will. <laughs> oh, my Maraconda. All they are trying to do is to restore Dagon. Dagon is crippled. 
may you cripple the idol that is speaking in your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Cripple the idol. Cripple that idol. If you can smuggle the ark there. That's what we mean when we say altar. The only response to an altar is altar versus altar. But this is true about the ark of God. If you can smuggle it there, there is no idol, no spirit that can stand the majesty of the glory of God. And I tell you this as a missionary.